Hey everyone, welcome. Hello. Atomic Radio Hour time. I'm your host, Vince. This episode 143. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah. And I'm your other host, Olive. How you been, friend? I am doing quite well, actually. You got any updates for us? I feel like my beard is a, is a tad askew. Tad askew? Yeah, a little bit. Um, not anything, like, life-changing. Um, but, like, over the weekend, I went thrifting, so I got, like, some new shirts. Like, I think this is really cute. Um, I got, like, a crap ton of shirts from Goodwill for, like, 30 bucks. Oh, shit! Speaking of Goodwill, guess what I fucking found? Again, Which getting out of work. Wanted to go into a Goodwill. Getting out of work. Stopped into a Goodwill. Again, where I found the Louis Vuitton bag. And look what I fucking find. Is that, like... <laughs> The original Fallout. It's Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics for the PC. That's crazy. Are the codes actually active? Uh, Disc. Disc. No code needed. Wild. All disc. Yeah. So I didn't know this existed. And then I'm like, I just saw Fallout and I went, gimme. And... <laughs> um. That's it's, like a cool like relic for your shelf. Dude, it's the British version. It's Peggy 16. Peggy 16. I love those. Peggy 18. Uh, yeah. It cost me $6. $6? Six whole dollar. I hate that there's a fucking Goodwill sticker on it and I was going to take it off. But my copy of Fallout 3 that I have here, the one that mm-hmm. I bought, not the Lunchbox edition, the one that I bought... On my, you know, was, your other copy of Fallout 3, but not that one. <laughs> it's the other copy it's, it's of Fallout the, the 3. The one I got on my birthday, um, ha, my, I remember my mom was just like, if you want a game, just let me know. We'll go. We'll go get it. We'll, we'll go out to dinner, whatever. And I was like, let me get that one. And I got it used. So I still have a, a yellow GameStop sticker for fifty four ninety nine on it. Wow. I never took it off. So, yeah, this is, this is the Fallout collection. And I never, ever thought I'd ever have... Fallout for the PC physically. I want that's the, crazy. I, and and I looked it up like what's like what's up with this like this version. Mm-hmm. Apparently, it's like fifteen bucks on eBay. Like it's not anything crazy, but it's still cool to find. Just to but, like like to as you're treasure it? hunting, you yeah. just find it. Yeah, and I mean it's it, it says bonus material or bonus levels, pen and paper game, which I'm really curious about. I kind of want to pop this in and see what's on the pen and paper game. Yeah. Um, Is it like a GURPS type thing? I don't know. It was originally supposed to be built on GURPS. So um, advertising arts, animation art, which would be great backgrounds for my computer. Screenshots, illustrations, and rendered concept art, storyboards, trailers, and logos. The only thing is That would be great for me for our thumbnails. Yeah. It's British, and that's the only problem. Um, Th- those UK folk, why, why is that a problem, though? Because I don't know if it'll work on my computer. Why wouldn't it? Because of region locking. Oh, yeah, region locking was, like, a thing. Yeah. But that shouldn't be a problem. It's an English region. Either way. I, I mean, they do speak the Queen's English, so. The Queen's English. The A's get really enunciated, and you sound more proper. I remember I did a British accent once when I was like eleven. That sounded like, like, a, like a David Attenborough kind of thing, like a <laughs> like an Animal Planet. Like we see the gamer in his wild. We habitat. see him in his natural habitat, going online to purchase things he does not need. Ah, um, I see. I, he goes to the stream to drink from Four Chan. <laughs> <laughs> I I did a British accent for a woman in like an arts and crafts store when I was but a boy, and mm-hmm. she was like, "That doesn't sound British." And I remember looking at her, being like, "What does that sound like to you? <laughs> like, what did what what did you well, think? Then what that, am I? Like, and I wasn't doing like Cockney." Like, I wasn't like, whoa, 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 and like, I wasn't like fucking doing that. Like, I was just, mm-hmm. I think I was doing more of like a Ringo, whatever. I learned how to make a pasta dish this week, and I'm very excited about it. And again, my beard what is, is your f- pasta dish. Uh, I, I, so here, here's the type but of after, person. After you talk about your pasta dish, I have to talk about pasta too. Okay, cool. Um, a pasta dish that I've always wanted to learn how to make was carbonara. Oh, and like a like a chicken carbonara? Kind of. It's not traditionally with chicken, um, but I love chicken. Yeah, dude, chicken's great. Here's the type of person that I am. Before I made this dish, I've been researching it off and on for like years because I've always wanted mm-hmm. to try to make it, and I will not allow myself to 
take the easy route on making it. I had to make it the of traditional way. I had to make of it. Of course the, not. Dude. It's, to make your own bread too? No. I've always wanted to do it though. Yo, my roommate makes dynamite bread. The thing is, if you make bread, you have to eat like the whole loaf in two days. Yeah. And is that going to be a problem for you? I mean, huh? no, I could do it. You're going to cry, huh? <laughs> You're going to cry? You're not going to eat that loaf of bread? No, I'm going to eat the bro. fucking loaf of bread, dude. I went to there. There's a, not far from me, about 15 minutes. Not far from where my Costco is. Um, there's an Italian, like uh, like a pork store where you can go in there. And part of part of making it, the traditional way to make it, you could use pancetta. Because the whole thing is mm. you have to you have to render the fat out of the out of the pork, and then you make your pasta, and then you have in a container some eggs and additional egg yolks and pecorino, and you beat the shit out of it into a mixture, and then like you take the pasta, you don't even strain the pasta, you take the pasta right out of the water, out of the boiling water, and you like put with it, the water and all. Oh no, a little bit. You just you just like mm. res- take the residual water. Right. Yeah. Uh, welcome to you Atomic. Don't let, you don't let the hair dry off first. No, welcome to Atomic <laughs> Cooking Hour. And then you kind of like make sure that the pasta gets incorporated with uh, the 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 fat. And then since the pasta's still hot, you pour the eggs and the cheese in, and the heat's off, and you just you just sit there and you like stir it and mix it and make sure that it like you got to move quick with it. And um, so th- you need what's called guanciale, and guanciale is of the jaw of the pig. Where hmm. bacon and pancetta is like the belly area. This is this is because I can't just enjoy cooking something. I need to know the fucking history of it. Um, no, that's like cool though. But you 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 mix it all together, and then I grilled some chicken up quick, and I threw that in there as well. But during my research, I found out that it's originally a dish from Rome. Really? And when yeah. So anyway, uh, when when Rome was conquering the world, it was kind of like a go to dish. Because it, you can make it really quick, and it's pretty much bacon, egg, and cheese with pasta instead of bread. That sounds yeah. delicious. It's delicious. It's it's a fucking. I love making it. That's what's, really cool. What's your pasta tale? New pasta just dropped. Do you see this shit? What are you talking about? Uh, this guy that's a podcaster invented a new kind of pasta. How? That is the ideal pasta for holding sauce within it. On one side, it is like flat. And like a little bit like rounded, and on the other side is like wavy. Can you put and a, it just it locks the pasta sauce in the pasta. Can you put a can you put a, a picture or a link to this, please? Yeah, it's, it's already in Host Lounge. I got you. I got you. It's like the ideal pasta. That looks snack. great. Doesn't it look great? Yeah, this guy worked for like three years on this like ideal pasta, and uh, what's it called? It's called a uh, cascatelli. Is he Italian? I don't know. Um, Why did he another guy that made it uh, is uh, Dan Pashman. No, that's not a. I it's not an Italian know. name. Um, it's a fettuccine-like noodle with ridges on the side. Huh. It's a gloopier, more succulent, Gloop. more comforting pasta. And okay. It, it gets super saucy. Like the ridges in it like hold sauce. Yeah, but here's my other question that goes mm-hmm. with that. Um if it's going to hold all that sauce in it, am I not going to have any sauce to like pick up with my Italian bread when I'm done? These are the I don't real know. I think that's something that you would have to test. I for one would like to try this new pasta that has just dropped. What's your favorite? What's your top 3 pastas? Um Penne, easily. Penne is like okay. my go-to pasta. White I love girl. Penne. Uh, That's the white girls of pasta. The white girls of pasta. All right, I love penne. Um, can't go wrong with like spaghetti, like sp- Sp- regular ass spaghetti. Spaghetti or bucatini? I don't know what that is. It's is spaghetti, it? but it has a hole in the middle of it, so it lets the sauce in. I don't know if I've ever had that. You probably have, and you didn't realize it. Probably. Yeah. Um. Does risotto count as pasta Isn't that rice? or rice? It's rice. It's like rice. Yeah. Um, I don't think I've ever made that. I've had some great risotto when I was over in over in the Baltic. Um, other uh, you said top three pastas. Yeah. Um, I like shells. You're the meat. whitest human I know. I'm sorry. I am. Don't not be sorry. A pasta. Just don't do it. <laughs> I just, 
I'm, I'm not... melanin deficient. <laughs> I can't help that I've got bad pasta taste. At least I'm not Sicilian. Wow, that's oh that's shit! A, I gotta put yeah. money in the jar for that. Yeah, uh, <laughs> top three pastas in no particular order: tortellini. Yeah, gnocchi. I was gonna say gnocchi's a good one too. Yeah, there's that's one. A, it's Aislinn's favorite. It's, it's the Aislinn best. Eats it's all the pasta fucking except best. gnocchi. It's the fucking best. It's great. It's if you make it the right way. It's one. It's potato. That's yeah. already you won. And um, dough ball. Dough wait, ball? is it? No, it's not potato. No, what am I thinking? It's no, it's flour. It's flour, but you don't have to make it with egg. A lot of people think mm-hmm. you have to make it with egg. Most pasta doesn't have egg. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say bucatini. I'm gonna say yeah. I'm gonna say it's just like spaghetti, but it's just I don't know. I have like but a better. Weird, just it's better getty. Yeah, like yeah, like I made I made the carbonara with it, and just like I don't know about you. Maybe this is mm-hmm. just me as a human. Um, but when I get a recipe in my head, I become like obsessed with it, and I like have to figure out how to do it. For me, it's kind of like a, eh, I, I make it so that it tastes good. I'm not looking for like that perfection oh, level. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not looking for perfection either. But it's, it's like when I first made dumplings, I was like, I need to tackle this. Like, I need to get this done. Like, this needs right. to be done properly. Well, you like, you value authenticity. Yeah. I want to struggle before I, t- I can take it easy so I can appreciate <laughs> taking it. No, seriously, so I can appreciate taking it easy because, like, right. why not? Like, <laughs> it's kind of like how you always make your own sauce except for that one kind that's good enough. That jar, that that yeah. rau, that rau sauce, that's the only sauce I'll ever buy and it's only the Costco I, sauce. Yeah, and it's only because I don't feel like making sauce because it's an all – I'm actually going to make sauce tomorrow, funny, funny enough. I just got oh, done yeah. watching. You should send me some frozen sauce. Yeah, eat my ass. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I just got done watching the new Godzilla movie with Papa. Yeah. It's, Are you going to talk about it on your other lizard show? No, not till we get there. Cause we're, mm. we're still in the, the oh, 60s you're, yeah, you're or going the 70s. Order, right. Yeah. Um, it's great. Is it really good? It's so fucking good. It's like the it's, new one. It's Godzilla versus, um, what is it? King Kong. King Kong. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the American, it's actually good. It's really good. It's not, it's not my favorite out of the American ones. Mm-hmm. Uh, my favorite one is the second one because it goes Godzilla, then it's Godzilla King of the Monsters, and then it's um, Godzilla versus Kong, which is really, really confusing because the first ever Godzilla movie from 54 is called Godzilla King of the Monsters. And then when they rebooted it at some point in Japanese, it came to America as like just Godzilla. Then there's just that Godzilla version with Matthew, Matthew Broderick. So it's really really confusing right now it's gotten to the point where it's godzilla parentheses 2009 yeah pretty much it's yeah. you have to have and then there's like godzilla the anime like netflix has some animes godzilla anime but here's my now thing you're speaking in my language godzilla anime to me doesn't make like comic godzilla doesn't make sense to me because i want to see giant suit and even though the new ones aren't giant suit it still it still makes sense. Like, it still works in a weird way, if that makes sense. Hold on. This kind of looks dope. It's Godzilla Planet of the Monsters. You Netflix being anime. You, you never having seen a Godzilla, you'd probably enjoy it. I, I listened to like a review on the series and me being mm-hmm. a fan of Godzilla. I was like, I never want to watch this. There's a lot of really cool cool. ideas. There's a lot of really cool ideas, but I just don't want to. But I think my favorite so far is from the American series is the second one, King of the Monsters. Um, Maybe this one and then the one from 2014, like in an order of some sort. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, dude, it's really good. It's I also rearranged my living room, so I can't wait to show you. Um, oh yeah, because um, it's now like an entertainment zone. Yeah, dude, I have my Switch, my PlayStation. I have a Super Nintendo hooked up. I got all. My- That's what I've got like surrounding me. I've got my Switch over here, my PlayStation in a box in my closet. <laughs> I have. You remember my stereo back home? Yeah. You remember my big speakers that were hooked up to my TV? Mm-hmm. I now have it where my TV runs to my stereo and then the stereo is hooked up to my record player, my cassette deck and my D and my CD. Oh, so player. it's like a full media center, dude. It's fucking. And then I have the big speakers like those big, like DJ speakers that I bought. Dude, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's nuts. It's so cool. Like I sat down when I was done at like two in the morning doing it and like, I was like, 
I was like, oh my god, I have like a not a theater, but like I have my own little like entertainment room. That's like it's cool that you mentioned that you kind of have your entertainment room like set up because our couch just got hauled off. Oh, finally. Yeah, the guy literally just came today to take it, and he's, he's fixing the entire frame, and he's redoing the cushions. He's doing it for, like, 400 bucks. It's like a steal. Just buy a new couch! What? Go to the oh, Goodwill. Well, no. or my, my roommate is super attached to this couch, and it's a, like, really nice piece of furniture. Sunken cause it, fallacy. Get rid of it. I hate it, personally. Dude, but Goodwill, it's, she's paying for it because she loves it, so I'm fine with it. Son, that. the Goodwill that I got this at, they they had mm-hmm. like four or five different couches. They had one with cup holders for sixty five dollars. With cup holders, well, she's attached to this piece of garbage couch. But hey, I will eat my words if it ends up being pretty comfortable after it comes back. So I've slept on the couch. I've sat on the couch. Su- yeah. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, you want to get? But hey, this? I'm oh. not being asked for a dime because she knows I hate it. She's gonna get married on that couch. <laughs> yeah. Um, you want to get into the lore? Before we do, we should really thank some people. Sure. So we've got some beautiful, beautiful patrons that help beautiful. make this program possible. Yes. And we have to thank them. Yes. So first up, we have the original Noah. Thank you, Noah. Then we have Danny. Thank you, Danny. We have Marcus. Thank you, Marcus. Bones Jones. Thank you, Bones Jones. And welcome to the stage, Girth Brooks. <laughs> Girth Brooks. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds like an awesome, like, uh, like a cowboy name. My name is Girth Brooks. Do you not know of Garth Brooks? Hmm? Do you not know of Garth Brooks? I'm... Stupid and gay, so tell me about it. Garth Brooks is, like, the one of the number one selling artists of all time. Hmm. Uh, yeah, it's... It, you never saw... Like that. He's, like, super detached from reality. He... I think he made a speech at the inauguration this year. Um... He looks... Older and whiter than that is my sphere of influence. Yeah. What are my two criteria for listening to music? Black and dead. Black and or dead. And I know who Garth Brooks is. How do you not know who Garth Brooks is? What He looks like a country musician. He is. You can tell by the well, fucking name. That, I, I don't acknowledge country. Neither do I. But it's, you know, he's... Dude, it's like him, the Eagles, Michael Jackson, uh... Who else is up there? The Beatles. I've heard of that one. (laughs) Younger Michael Jackson. (laughs) Mike Jack. Yeah, dude, he's like, he, hold on. How many albums has Garth Brooks sold? I don't care, to be completely honest. Are you a fan of music? I guess I have to say yes. Okay, so I feel like And you're going to tell me... Then I, then I have got to know this. I feel like I feel like I, you don't have to know who fucking uh, Travis Tritt is, but I feel like you should know who Garth Brooks is when he sold 157 million albums. He's mm, gone platinum probably. 157 million times. This is what Google says. The Recording Industry Association of America has certified Garth Brooks albums a total of 157 times platinum. And he has sold 157 million albums in the U.S. alone. Just the U.S. As of October of 2019, making him the best-selling album artist in the U.S. since Nielsen Soundscape began tracking music sales in January of 1991. Who is the number one selling artist of all time? The Beatles... It's the Beatles with 257.7 million sales, Elvis Presley with 207, and Michael Jackson with 169.7. All right, and, so this guy is kind of a big deal, and, and I just don't know about him. Yeah, I don't fucking like well, Elvis. Good thing, and I don't, I, good thing I don't care about Garth Brooks, because I care about Girth Brooks. <sighs> Because he's the one that is supporting our, he, she, or they, what have you, uh, are supporting this show, and I have to thank for Thanks. that. Thanks, Girth. <laughs> do, you want, <laughs> do you want to do the lore? <laughs> I would like to get into it. All right. So if you've been playing along at home, 
we've been we did the protagonists, then we did the antagonists. Now we're doing the DLC antagonists. I'm doing them in order. We've come back. I think we're done with Fallout Three at this point. No, we still have we still have one more. Oh, wow. Um, we have, we still have to tackle Mothership Zeta, but this one we have to uh, tackle Big Mountain. Big Mountain. And I think next episode is Nuka World. But we have to do Big Mountain. Now, uh, Big Mountain is some some people. It's their favorite DLC. Um, it's my it's my least favorite of the New Vegas DLCs. <laughs> uh, but it's it's interesting, and you can get through it like really quick if you don't feel like doing everything. Yeah, I mean, I usually do a lot of it because it it makes me laugh. Uh, it's it's funny, it's wacky, it's h- humorous. I just don't, I I don't like it. That first opening dialogue of forty when I streamed it, it was like forty five minutes of dialogue. <laughs> Like, if you go find the NCR Chuck, I don't even remember what episode. I want to say it's, like, episode 11, maybe. Um, Mm -hmm. It's me going, oh, my God, get on with it. If (laughs) if there was a mod that I would want, I would want one that would change the face, like, in Fallout 4. So I can at least see who's speaking. Like, just Mm -hmm. to make it dynamic instead of just looking at Klein the whole time. Um, Lobotomite. But since we're doing, since we're since we're here, since we're at Big Mountain, it's time that we talk about Doctor Mobius. Um, I like Mobius. I do too, and that's that's my thing that I get like upset about with with Old World Blues is that I like the voice acting. I like how Doctor O is Doctor Venture. Like mm-hmm. I, I like a lot of it, and it's just it's so bogged down by. It being an old world blues. I also don't like calling Big Mountain the Big MT. The Big Empty. I don't know. So let's just let's just let's just jump right into it. Doctor Mobius is a think is in a think tank operating the Big Mountain in 2281. He is the leader of the Robo Scorpion Army and nemesis of Doctor Klein, and the team which he belonged to. Again, the Robo Scorpions just, I don't, a lot of this DLC doesn't feel very Fallout y to me. Mm. Um, it's got great writing, though. Like, don't get me wrong. Dr. Mobius was one of, oh, I get all my lore off of fallout.fandom.com. Uh, when we do these big characters like this, I want to make sure I get everything. I don't write anything wrong because I, I do have the dyslexia. And uh, I read right from the wiki. Dr. Mobius was one of the big mountain, of the big mountain think tank. Executives before the Great War, sometime after the war, he became a think tank in order to continue his work at the Big Mountain. Like the others, he forgot part of his personality and his real name due to recursion a recursion loop in their new perception programming. After the escape of the Cazadors and the Night Stalkers, Mobius became disillusioned with the methods of the others in the think tank. He grew tired of the endless and horrible experimentation and was deeply afraid of the damage the amoral and psychosis-ridden think tank think tanks would wreck upon the fragile post-apocalyptic world in the name of science. He erected a radar fence, a kind of radar guided repulsion field around the perimeter of Big Mountain to pre- prevent the disembodied brains from escaping into the wasteland. After a severe dispute with Klein, Mobius removed all of the chips of the personalities in the sink, his room and personal laboratory. I'm going res- to I'm going to call that the whole time too. I'm not going to say laboratory. I'm going to say laboratory because Dexter's lab is a great show and I love it. Mm-hmm. And against their will, hacked the data banks of his colleagues reprogramming their chronometers, geometers and cartography programs making Mm -hmm. them lose sense of history time and the world beyond the big mountain to the point that they now believe the big mountain is the world and nothing else beyond its mountainous boundaries exist he also actively fostered the false notion that the robo scorpions are somehow able to consume intelligence from brains fueling the think tank's fear of leaving the big mountain central dome in the process of making these alterations 
though he also damaged some of their memories and knowledge, leaving only mangled, disjointed versions behind. Disgusted to have done this to his friends, he also erases some sections of his own memory. <laughs> this event and the pre-war creation, his pre-war creation, the Robo-Scorpion, before exiling himself. Afterwards, Mobius moved to the X-42 Robo-Welfare Facility, which he has renamed the Forbidden Zone, and began <laughs> to recreate the Robo-Scorpions inspired by Rad Scorpions. These new versions included all features of the pre-war model, such as an energy bolt blaster in the tail, high sensitive, highly sensitive robotic eyes, and communication systems connected directly to his stronghold. Now in possession of a proper army, army, Mobius decided that without something to distract the other think tanks, the radar fence would eventually become insufficient to contain them. He began to send repetitive threatening broadcasts designed to instill fear and prompt the think tank to focus on retrieving technologies with which to defend themselves. With the remaining think tank trapped in the central dome, with the exaggerated fear of Mobius, the big mountain fell mostly silent. Although not originally aggressive in his intentions, Mobius' own behavior seemed to have degraded over the years. Likely in part due to an increased, an increasingly serious addiction to Mentads and Psycho. By you know, if you do drugs, you just kind of become crazy. <laughs> <laughs> did you know that? Did you know that Psycho was pre-war? Was it? I'm like pretty sure. Let me just double check that I'm here. I, when I was streaming it, I found out <laughs> the the actual link. I just clicked on Psycho. The actual link for Psycho is oh, I was probably tripping hard on Psycho when I sent that Mobius. <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Yeah. A uh, military grade psych psych psychosis inducing amphetamine. Uh, it was there during the great Constantine chase and it entered combat use during the final stages of the Anchorage reclamation. Hmm. Yeah. It's in Alaska. Yeah, it, it, it's a pre-war drug. I had no clue. I learned when I was playing uh, when I was playing New Vegas. Cool. Uh, by 2281, he had not only lost the function, sorry, by, tw by 2281, he had not only lost the functionality of his right eye monitor, but also began to suffer from short-term memory loss, hallucinations, and obsessive compulsive behavior. Although his plan had been mostly successful, the recent arrival of Father Elijah, Christine, and Ulysses from the Mojave caused the curiosity of the think tank to begin pursuing beyond the boundaries he had set for them. The arrival of the courier and the subs subsequent survival of their lobotomy proved to be <laughs> the last straw. Mobius unleashed a fresh wave of robo-scorpions and announced his false intentions to finish the other think tank off once and for all while subliminally suggesting to them that various technologies around Big Mountain would help them against it. These technologies are a sonic emitter, the X2 antenna, and the stealth suit Mark II are all actually components required to rehouse a brain inside of. Eventually, the courier defeats the X2, the X42 giant rat scorpion and enters the Forbidden Dome to confront Mobius. I like that's, Mobius. That's really it, and I gotta be yeah, honest with you, much. I'm really upset that there's not more... More Mobius. There's not more pre-war stuff that I could find. Like, mm -hmm. like in general, like I can't find, like... There's not in game like I can't find. Or, um, okay, sure. Yeah, like that seems just to be it. Yeah. Like Mo what Mobius? Do you know what is what? Do you know what the name Mobius is a reference to? No, I don't. Is it in the notes? Uh, it's in behind the scenes, but I already knew this. Oh. Um, so the name is a direct reference to the Mobius strip, which is a 3D object that topography has only one side. Hmm. I think I know it's what that like, is. I think that's the, the bar with the circles, not the, with the cylinders. Um, have you ever been to my campus before? I don't, yeah, once, but dude, I don't remember. 
Oh, um, I know what that is. It's like the the thing that's on that statue. Yes. Yeah. No, I looked it up. I looked it up. I know yeah. what that is. I didn't know it was called a mo- so that's that's a recursion loop. No, this is just a Mobius strip. No, but it's a but I'm saying it's a loop. It's it, it's it's a loop, but it's yeah. only uh What is it like used a one-sided for? thing? Are common in the manufacturing of Fabric computer printers and typewriter ribbons. Huh. As they let the ribbon be twice as wide as they print head while using both halves of it evenly. Neat. Yeah, it's really cool. Hmm. Neil deGrasse Tyson talks about the Mobius strip. He probably just talks down to you for 15 minutes and then does it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we get it. you got a bigger brain than me. Um, let's see. What else is here? To the notes. Here's some fun facts. Mobius has a tendency for mm, ma- malapropisms. Malapropisms. Okay. For example, instead of saying reason, quiet, and desert, he'll say raisin, quiet, and dessert. <laughs> it's like the Rugrats. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Um, he also suggests. Yeah. To differentiate between other words and names such as custard and mustard. (laughs) Mobius programmed the Sync Central Intelligence Unit uh, to accept bottle caps. Dr. O believes they were added in as a debug code, though. Dr. Dallas states that Mobius was obsessed with with what the post-war economy would be like and correctly predicted that bottle caps would have become valued currency post-war. He was also responsible for the creation of all of the sync intelligences, except for Muggy. Muggy was created by Dr. O. Dr. Mobius was inspired by Dr. Edward Morbius, the antagonist in the 1956 science film Forbidden Planet, as well as the name of his base was inspired by the name of the film. He also references it in dialogue. Hmm. The murderous gang of thugs that he said he, he, that he said once went looking for a spine, heart, and a brain, but had them all along as a reference to the Frank Al Alba- Frank Al Bomb's book, The Wizard of Oz. The thugs are in reference to the Cowardly Lion, the Tin Man, and the Scarecrow, respectively. That was pretty good. Yeah. If the player has taken Wild Wasteland, Mobius will mention keeping several Plan 9s in place, which is a reference to the cult classic and 1959 science fiction horror film Plan 9 from Outer Space. Have you ever seen Plan 9? I have not, have you? Neither have I, but it's a it's the worst it's the worst movie ever made. It's the We should watch it. We should. We should watch it as a burner when we do movie we reviews. Um let me see if I can find a Blu-ray of it. That'd be really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I like the next one too. Read the it. song Dr. Mobius occasionally sings in his lab, electrons attached to the neutrons, the neutrons attached to the masons, the masons connected to the proton, is a reference to the spiritual song Dem Bones. The leg bone is connected to the knee bone, the knee bone is connected to the thigh bone, etc., etc. His farewell dialogue, please mind the equations on the floor, is a reference to the Greek scientist and engineer Archimedes, who was killed by a Roman legionary during the Second Punic War, purportedly because he was angry and shouted out to the legionaries who unintentionally stepped over the mathematical writings on the ground. Do not disturb my circles. (laughs) If asked about a nonviolent way to deal with a think tank, Mobius will suggest appealing to their humanity, mentioning how a wise man once said that the uh, that the eyes do more than see. This is likely reference to a short story, Eyes Do More Than See by Isaac Asimov. Okay, it didn't tell me anything about the story, though. Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Neither am I. That's Mobius. I like his little icon for what he looked like before the, yeah. the think tank. That dude fucks. <laughs> yeah. That mustache. Hell yeah. That's like a Karl Marx looking ass mustache. Side. Oh, hell yeah, dude. Fire, uh, yeah. Um, that's it. You, you want to talk about Do you think Mobius is the good guy or the bad guy? I don't think he's 
Mm, I feel like everyone at Big Mountain is kind of dubious at best. Yeah, I think his intentions were pure. He but wanted he also to... was super high on drugs. Yeah, dude. And then tampered with people's memories. Yeah, dude. Which is uh, definitely not a great thing to do. That's something that Hitler would have done. <laughs> <laughs> no? Am I wrong? You're going to look at me and tell me that I'm wrong? Grow up, bro. What? Don't worry about it. What is that um, from? It's from that uh, that video of... Uh, and his wicked and the, his sister was a witch about like the oh oh, and what was her sister a princess, Were the wicked fighting? witch of the east, bro. Yeah, that's Mobius. I, I like Mobius. I don't think he's necessarily the bad guy, but he's easy to point at. When you're at Big Mountain, like well, that's why I picked him that's because a bad one. We could have did the entire thing tank, and I just think that the entire thing tank would be fun for a different episode, mm-hmm. um, where like we can talk about every doctor in the think tank, and they get like five minutes to themselves and whatnot. Um, mm-hmm. And I just think that Mobius, because he's kind of pointed at as the bad guy, like you said, I thought it'd be fun to but kind he's of like talk about him. Not really that bad. No, and that's the thing is like the next the next. Ser- the next lore bit that we're going to do is on Nuka World, and I don't know who to do for the bad guy, so I might just talk right. about that because there's because the whole point of the game was to let you become a raider and have fun, figure out which clan, yeah. So, like, do I just talk about the three groups? I guess we should probably just talk about the clans, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I like Mobius, I like I like I climb for the voice more. But I like Mobius, I, I like Dr. Zero. I like Dr. Zero. I like Venture Brothers. Mm-hmm. That's lore. That is lore. How are you? I'm doing quite well. Anything you want to talk about? Um, anything in particular? No, I mean, I, I, I can. I have an idea for some stuff, but if you'd like to go first. Um, can I give a little public service announcement? No. Okay. <laughs> What's up? Uh, not much, but today, the day that we're recording this, the 31st of March, is Transgender Day of Visibility. And if you're perceiving me, then you ought to celebrate that. Um, take some time to learn about people that are different from you. And um, just be good. That's all I have to really say about that. What do you think? Do you perceive? I mean, I'm forced to look at you, so yeah. There's a game I always want to play on here with you, mm-hmm. but like, I'm not trying to like suck my own dick. <laughs> I just, I just think that I've like, I have such an advantage in the game with you. Sure. What is I, it? I, I mean, we don't have to play it. It's just an idea that if anybody ever wants to hear us play it and they think it might be interesting, maybe we'll do it one day. But I've always wanted to do a game where like you and I make a song up together. Really. And, like, you make a line, and then I make a line, and it has to rhyme with each other, and it has to kind of flow and go together, and has to be somewhat, like, cognizant. And Mm. I just know that – I just have a – I shouldn't say I know. I just have a feeling that I would just make it too hard for you. Or yeah, I have a feeling that of that too. Or you would you would just be like the last word is the word that rhymes, and I would try to make it where like three or four words in it rhyme, or like have some like I would I just know I would go, I would go too hard on it. <laughs> like I, like when I try to teach people board games. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Speaking of which, do you have a do you have a, do you have a spare copy of the DMG the player guide and. I don't have spare copies, but I do have uh, digital PDFs. I can give them to you. Yeah, I might need them. You can also get them on D&D Beyond if that's something you want to do. Well, I want to run a and d game. Oh, yeah? Tell me about it. Um, I want to run a and d game. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably do it in like the same setting that we always do it in. Like mm-hmm. that, like, oh, here we are in Ellenshire or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. The people that like I'm going to play with, I, I don't know how much experience they have. So, so, and you like, know me. Babies like, first. I don't okay. want to do a babies first because I don't want to get Why don't you just run like, Lost Minds? I don't know what that is. Lost Minds of Fandelver is like literally the first thing that came out for 5e and it's Wait, made to teach people. I think somebody gave me that 
and I never gave it back to them. This one guy that I used to DM for when I was getting paid to do it, he didn't like me DMing because he's like, how come we never gotten a magical item? And I'm like, you never asked for one. <laughs> and he's yeah, like, I was like, and I give you magical items all the time. I just give you like, I don't like magical items that are like, oh, it's a, it's a, a this, that plus a this, a this, and a this. Like I want a magical mm-hmm. item that's wacky as fuck. And it's going to, because magic is not like an afterthought in my worlds, but it's like, if anything, it's there to advance plot. For me, I like magic, I like mundane magic items. Yeah, which yeah, is kind yeah. Of like an oxymoron. Like, like here's a coin like, that when you flip it and it goes on head, it's it summons a penguin. <laughs> I like things that are like, here is a here's a like a, a bunch of rope that at dawn it grows an inch. <gasps> that's fucking cool as shit. Yeah, just like really like small stuff. Like that's what I like. It's like here. Okay, so to play on that, here's a rope. Mm-hmm. The longer you leave it out in the sun, the more it grows. Like just not even like an inch. Like, like it, it just it like could, grows like like a plant, and it could grow up to four feet a day, or it could grow up mm-hmm. to like five feet because everything's done in fucking fives. This is a bird. <laughs> this bird is immortal and invincible. It can do no damage, but it just flies around. Just yeah. Chills. Like <laughs> here, here. Let's let's play a fun game. I'm gonna read off a magical item to you. Like from like the internet and I have to explain what it do. Yeah, you have to you have to tell me what you think it is. All right, well, I actually love this, but I will warn you, I know a lot of the magic items from 5e. Shit, okay. But let's I don't know them all. There's like hundreds. How so. about the absorbing tattoo? The absorbing tattoo? Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Why about is this that happening? One. Why is this? I just want to know what it does. I don't want It's wanna... like a tattoo that like it's like a washcloth that just like picks up water. <laughs> I I don't even know if I could tell you because uh I click on it and it doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> Alright, so let's change the game up a bit. Okay. You give me an item, you just tell me a random D D item, and then I will make it magic. Like any item from D D. Any item from the game. Do you like, want to start no, like, no, no. With like, soft- like, 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 you want me to like start softball and then get a little harder? Yeah, yeah. Like, you give me an idea of like, it's a coin or it's a this and it's a that, and then I have to kind of build onto it. Okay. Um, I'm going to start with an easy one. Sure. And I'm going to say a short sword. It's a short sword that whenever the person who wields it, gets embarrassed it gets shorter (laughs) (laughs) shit like like this is the thing that like does it for me yeah all right all right all right bagpipes oh hold on now i gotta give you one okay fine all right uh a shovel a shovel oh give it a name too um i'm gonna call the short sword of (laughs) (laughs) um so yours is a shovel a shovel. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna call it the the David Spade, and every <laughs> time you use it, it just like says something in David Spade's voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, bagpipes. Go. They're okay. So they're magic bagpipes, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and they summon these, like, these, like, okay, you know, like a rock golem in D&D? Yeah. It summons a rock golem, but they're, like, two and a half feet tall, and whoever is playing the bagpipes, the rock golems hate them. Like, they don't just appear out of thin air. Uh, the DM has to roll a D12, and depending on how many of them, uh, whatever it rolls on is how many rock golems show up. And they attempt to beat whoever is playing the bagpipes to death because they hate the noise of it. But if you, like, in parentheses in the book, if you do this properly, you uh, can use it to your advantage and they'll fight for you. If done properly. I've got a good one. Okay. Okay. Can I just tell you about it but uh, sure. without the, the contest? Sure. So I found a sea blanket. So I'm thinking like the t- the blanket of warm toes so that like whenever your toes slip out, the blanket like wraps around and makes sure your toes are warm. <laughs> <laughs> um, how about, how about, here's another one for you. How about, a uh, how about 
a bottle. A bottle? Like this one. Um, we can do something cliche like the everlasting phylacter, which is like what if you put like one drop of a liquid in it, it just fills that liquid up to the top and you can nah, just you gotta make something forever. new. You gotta make something new. Maybe something cool. Yeah. Um What if uh what if it's like a terrarium bottle? Like if you put a bug in it, it can live in there forever without like any like food, water, sun. It's just like perfectly It's like a pocket dimension? It's like a, a perfect little like a uh, container to house a bug or something. You know what I was my first thought was? Hmm. Um, you have to fill it up halfway with water, but you it can turn into one of three liquids: blood, oil, or and I did have a third one. I there's something like that in D and D already. Really? Yeah, it's, it's kind of similar to that. It's just something I thought of because I thought of go, walking into a town with a full thing of blood and going, "This is a blood. This is the blood of a child," and getting like the <laughs> town like against you. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Give me one. 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 All right, I'm gonna go to a, like I'm just looking at like a bunch of random items. I'm just Wah. gonna go to a random page. Way. Um. All right. Um, what about an hourglass? That does something cool. See, I feel like the easy route is to be like, the hourglass, it slows down time. But that's like, come on. Um, what about like an hourglass that lets you do all your chores like within 10 minutes? (laughs) I like where your mind's at because I'm Mm going to say something like an hourglass that regardless of race... It's only it can only be used once a day, regardless mm. of race or class. If you if you meditate and you put the hourglass on and you focus on the the sand running through and you really really focus and meditate, you can skip a long rest. Like it it'll fully rest you. That's really cool. Like you get a long rest out of a short rest. Pretty like like yeah like what what That's constitutes cool. a short rest? Like two to four hours. Yeah. I was going to say 30 minutes, but sure, if that's a short rest, you can you mm-hmm. can take the time to do a short rest. So if you're in a dungeon and you're just like, I need to I need to heal, I need to rest, like you can kind of focus on it, but it's only once a day. All right, give me something. Um, a collar. Um, I'm going to say the collar of silence. We should, I'm listening to you, and I'm sorry to cut you off, but we should be saying what this does, like, outside of just, oh, you fill it up, like, if it gives you a plus two to something. Right, right, right. Um, the collar of silence, whoever you put it on, whenever they try to speak, it just comes, nothing comes out. Okay. Like handcuffs for your throat. <laughs> I just, I just guess, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like you could have, you could have went a little harder. Well, I'm sorry. No, I'm just, you know. Um. Uh, all right, I'm going to give you one that has a lot of leeway. Sure. A ruby gemstone. So if you've ever played D&D with me, you know that my go-to is to put children in gems uh, as a plot device. Mm-hmm. Um, a ruby gem. Hmm. Okay, it's a ruby. It's, it's a ruby gem, but it's not a real ruby. Um... When you when you hit it, it splinters into a bunch of pieces, but they're the same size as the ruby, and they mm. last for like if you if you say it's like this big, right? Like say it's like that, mm-hmm. like a little bigger, like a, like a half dollar, so like right. an inch and a half. You can put it in your hand and crush it, and then six rubies of the same size will show up. So you can give five of the six to people, and whichever mm. one is the original ruby will will stay but the other five that you've given out after uh an hour disappear so that's kind of cool so if you need to pay somebody off quick yeah see this is why like like magic magic items for me aren't combat based they're situationally based so if you smash the ruby you can be like here's five rubies oh my Mm, god thank counterfeits and they're they'll, they'll 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 turn into smoke after an hour oh that's that's pretty cool Seeing as uh, the ruby in question is worth 5,000 gold pieces. Yeah. Here you go. Here's 25,000 gold. (laughs) Run with it. 
Um, again, once a day. Uh, how about a shirt? Just like a shirt? Like, you know, not like a t-shirt, but like a button-up, like a, fl- a, fl- a, fl- a, fl- a blouse. Like a poet shirt. Yeah. Something like with strings here. Mm-hmm. And yeah. it's flowy. Um, I'm going to say the... Uh, oh. The shirt of flowing gallantry. Okay. And what it does is um, whenever you kind of like fluff the collar on it, it billows and looks really cool and it's like perfectly cleaned. Oh, and it's cool. like you can really like impress people and it like gives you a bonus to like some kind of like check to convince someone of something. That's kind of where my mind was at when I thought of shirt. It's mm-hmm. uh, the shirt of perfect fit. That no matter what your body type <laughs> it is, fits, right? it, it's like the sisterhood of the traveling pants. No matter, <laughs> no matter what, um, no matter who's wearing it, 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 it fits perfectly. Like it's, it's the way you like it. It looks good on you. Um, and once a day you get advantage on a charisma based check. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. That's kind of what I was thinking. Oh, that's really cool. I just like the idea of it just like flowing in the breeze, like looking yeah, yeah, really yeah. Like, like enchanting. You're underwater wearing the shirt. And it's like, how, the, how is there still a breeze going? How is it billowing like <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's give each other one more each. All right. Um, I kind of want to go for a weapon. Okay, cool. Um, you want to give me a weapon or you want a weapon? I'm going to give you a weapon. Okay. I'm going to say shotgun. But think outside of the box. Mm -hmm. Like, even if it does no damage, what do it do? A shotgun. Mm Mm-hmm. See, I'm not good with weapons. I'm better with items. And I'm also... The thing that I was thinking of, uh, it would be the shotgun called the not gun, which it looks like a fully, like, decked out shotgun, but when you shoot it, it's just confetti. (laughs) Um... I was thinking of like a like a my, the thing I was thinking of for a shotgun was a children's toy, kind of mm-hmm. like a like a Euclid Sea Finder. Um, yeah, it's a children's toy, but like it would take hours and hours, if not years, of research to fi- figuring out how it actually works because it's like from like an ancient time, and mm-hmm. it's like a prototype of one of the first guns, but it's a blunderbuss that's ridiculously powerful. Um, mm-hmm. Like I'm talking like. Like 8d6 of damage. Ooh, that's like, what, a fireball? It's like a fireball. Okay, then it would be more than that. Probably, I'm th- I, like, it's a lot. Like, it's a high like level weapon. Like 10 or 12d6. Yeah. Like, Damn. Like, you, you like a really, legendary weapon. Yeah, like, you, you need to really figure out how this works. But it's a toy gun. Like, it looks like a toy. And it's, like, mm. even the size it's of, like... Like, 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 a, like a Nerf blaster. Kind. Do you, you ever pick up, like, a plastic dollar store army gun? Yeah. And it's like this, and you're like playing with it and you're pretending. And like like it it even feels weird. So <laughs> imagine like, that, but it just shoots bullets. But it just it like it has a massive kick to it. Like it's just mm-hmm. that's that's what I was kind of thinking of, but it you'd have to research it, you'd have to learn how right. to use it. Like there's a grip that your hand has to kind of become accustomed to. You have to tickle it on on, on the stock a little bit. Sure. <laughs> Alright, give me give me the last one. Make it crazy. A piece of wood, a plank, if you will, a two by four. A two by four plank of wood. All right. Um, I, I don't think this is that crazy, but it's something I think would be really cool. It's a two by four plank of wood. And say it's like a, a given amount of feet tall. If you put it that but it's like a given amount of feet tall but if you bridge any gap it'll instantly construct a full ass bridge Ooh, like a okay. fully like permanent structure bridge i thought that was going to be a curveball for you okay with like with like nice stone work yeah. and everything like but it just looks like a two by four does it have to reach the other side it has to reach the other side that's I w- the kicker see i wouldn't do that my no. way would be a t- two inches mm-hmm. two inches by four inches and you have to throw it. You'd have to make a check for strength. Mm-hmm. And it'd have to be in the middle. And if it hits in the middle, then... If there's oh, 150 cool. foot... But that's the thing. If there's a 150 foot gap, you have to throw it 75 yeah. feet. Right. You know what I mean? That's fucking throw it 75, 75 feet. Like, 
Not everybody and then it just can like do that. instantly like pops up like a pop up tent. Yeah, like it'll it'll <laughs> it it gets thrown and then it kind of and then it just stops right there in the middle and you can see it kind of shake and it just goes. Oh uh, hell yeah! I like That's really game. cool. Um, I saw this thing on uh, the BBC because it just popped up on my little like Google sure. news feed thing. It says police bust world's biggest video game cheat operation. So a collaborative effort between Chinese police and gaming giant Tencent has oh. led to the closure of what police say is the biggest ever video game cheat operation. The gang designed and sold cheats for popular games like Fort, not Fortnite, for Overwatch and Call of Duty. Roughly $76 million in revenue was made wow. by the organization, which charged a subscription fee to clients. They see, the police seized $46 million in assets, oh including blood including luxury cars. Oh my God. Uh, the operation was called chicken drumstick and Why? had a website selling hundreds of selling to hundreds of countries and regions. Subscription prices began at like 10 bucks a day to up to 200 bucks a month. Holy crap. For cheating for games. I, I don't like, I like cheating at all, but not like I wouldn't pay for cheats. What do you mean you like cheating? Like, I like some like I I'll like play a game and just like all right I'll spawn items like if I just like oh, don't yeah, really yeah, care yeah, yeah yeah like I'm all for like having cheating fun f- for like having fun but yeah. like what's the point of playing Overwatch if you're gonna cheat the point yeah, of Overwatch like, is competitiveness it's a competitive game meant to be for to test your skills yeah so I just don't see the point of cheating but the fact that such a big operation actually like went yeah. down that's, that's wild. pretty wild. Yeah. Do you see a picture of these cars that got taken? Yeah, put it in the thing. By the way, I read that story from the BBC. You said that? Yes. I like the green one. I do too. I like the G-Wagon really cool. in the back. It looks like the, the mystery machine colors. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that'll, it'll be on screen. Yeah. Wow. Jesus. Police seized $46 million in assets. That's crazy. $46 million. What would you do with $46 million? And not like, oh, I, pay off my parents' house. What would you do fun? Um, what fun shit would you do? What fun shit would I do? Yeah. Um, I would... I would have a... I would want to, like, host a convention that was, like, a full dive, like, fantasy event. Like, you had to, like, have, like, a character set up. Yeah. And, like, you would just, like, go around and, like... You have to be in character the whole time, and like, you what can, if you like, break character? Then you get shot. <laughs> you get shot, and you're gonna say that you get shot in the yeah. back of the head. You get shot in the back with an arrow of one of the archers that is in character. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> no, I think it'd be cool to have like this, like, like rent out a big space and make like this cool, like, fantasy, th- like a Ren fair, but like yeah. way more. Like high production value. I think I would uh, like animatronic dragons and shit. I think I would put a theater in my house, like a movie theater. Yeah, that's cool. I think I put a theater in my house, and then I would have like a gaming room, like <laughs> uh, gamer room. Yeah, where part of the room is a giant. I don't know if I want to. If I'm gonna have that much money, I don't know if I want a real one. Probably not a real one. I want to as close to a real replica of a T Rex skull. Hmm. That inside of it is a is a PC like a like a high tech gaming rig. That's cool. And it's like, like RGB. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's it's like to the nines, like maxed out. I would want a vending machine that yes. just has free. A vending machine that has free sloppy. I <laughs> fuck you. I want I sloppy want, Joe. That is. <laughs> I want um a vending machine that every time you enter my house. You go to this machine and you like hit a button like Chuck E. Cheese and it spits out fun bucks and it's my face on there like this. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want anything, you just you have to put like these fun but like it's unlimited. Like you hit the button, here's yeah. like ten dollars. No, that doesn't even make sense. Here's twenty coins. And then you just and you go like to need machine. to use the fun bucks to like open the fridge. No, no, there would be like there would be like uh, uh, I put a phone booth because I want to see if kids are like, what is this? Not that I would have kids at my house, but like you know what I mean, like, uh, like a Willy Wonka fantasy. What? 
<laughs> like, and, come on, kids, get your no, hot box. No, I'm saying I just, like, when my brother would have friends over, I would bring my records to the kids and go, what is this? I would, like, what is, tell me what this is. What is this? So. Tell me. Um, like, I would I put a phone booth in, a bunch of vending machines. I would get a bunch of vending machines from Japan imported. That'd be cool. Yeah. That'd be super cool. Yeah. What do you think Shane Ivers would do? I think he would probably get a full-scale music production set up so that he can make yeah. our intro music, Feather Duster. Yes. If you want to get that, you can get it at music slash slash free music slash Feather Duster. I said that right. You want to try it again? Do it again. Give the man the credit. Silver, uh, www.silvermansounds.com slash free music slash Feather Duster. Vince, yes. tell us about social. In the description below somewhere, there will be some links to the show's Twitter, my Twitter, Olive's Twitter. And uh, while you're down there, check out the Discord. Come on in. Join. Have a dime and a half if, you, if, you, if, you, if you'd if if be so inclined. Um, I feel like it's been a long time since we've recorded an episode. Two. We just recorded last week, didn't we? I know, but it feels like that's been like two weeks. Like I feel like we skipped a week. I don't think so. No, I know we didn't, but I like I'm like blanking on what to say here. I feel like a buffoon. Um check out the Twitters, check out the 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 Discord. While you're down there, there's a bunch of other links to other stuff. I've been streaming on Twitch, so has Olive. Um I'm going to stream tomorrow. I know this doesn't mean anything because we record on a Wednesday and this comes out on a Saturday, but I'm going to stream tomorrow Psychonauts. So if you're hearing this on Saturday and you've always wanted to see some Psychonauts gameplay, Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be there. I'll probably be streaming on Tuesday because I've got work all day on Monday. Gang. Sorry, Lamp. Minecraft stream is pushed off. No. You're going to stream on Tuesday, though? Minecraft on on Tuesday? All right. So follow us on Twitch. Um... Thank you to the Patreon again. Because of you guys, we can do this. Uh, and thank you to anybody who's ever got anything off Redbubble or anyone who just checks out the Redbubble. There's some designs. There's some shirts. Some I want to make a bags. Vince Buck design. A what? A Vince, Vince Buck design? design? Dude, that's a, that's, that's a 10 million. <laughs> V-Bucks. Ha ha ha. Ha ha. Yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff there. Check it out. Uh, there's a this has, this has been a Goulman Entertainment production. There's a bunch of other Goulman shows on the YouTube channel. So if you're listening on a, a podcast feed, make sure you go to the YouTube channel. Um, if you were into the D and D stuff, we do have a D and D show on YouTube. If you like Godzilla, like we talked about, we do have a Godzilla show. Um, if you like Kyle, we have a show with Kyle, myself, and we got Papa. a lot of shows with Kyle. Yeah, that's that's Papa. All that's right. Papa. I'm fucking tired. Um, I'm very tired too. I need to go to bed. Okay, time to go. Good night, everyone. Bye. Sweet dreams. Don't part, let, people are probably don't let the, the, the Vince just, bugs bite. You're just saying, you're, why Why you make me the vermin? I can be the vermin. I'm an I, olive yeah. bug. Munch, munch, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> Bye. Atomic Radio Hour Podcast. A Goulman Entertainment Production.